These are your cycling of matter notes. These notes are going to cover four different major cycles that we will be discussing further in class. So just in general, <clears throat> in our cycles in the biosphere, there's a fixed amount of matter, aka nothing new is being formed. So energy is transformed into usable forms to support ecosystem functions, but there's never any new created. It's always just cycling what we already have. And it involves matter in both living organisms and physical processes. So weathering of rocks is an example of a physical process, and then different organisms also contribute. So there's four major cycles. So we have carbon oxygen, water cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle. Hopefully this one you know the most about or it's just review. And this one honestly talks about photosynthesis and cell respiration, so that should also be review. So first up is the carbon oxygen cycle or it's sometimes just called the carbon cycle. And let's just take a look at this picture here. So we have your higher level consumers, your primary consumers, and your producers. Okay? So just like we do, these animals here and here, they breathe out CO2. They take in O2. Plants, on the other hand, do the opposite. They take in the CO2 and release the O2. You also have burning coming from factories that creates more CO2 in the atmosphere, and then you have decomposition that creates more in the atmosphere. So it's just a big process that all overlaps with each other. So within this cycle, there are two major processes. So there's photosynthesis and cell respiration. In case you don't remember, you should. Photosynthesis is plants. Cell respiration is animals. And they're pretty much the opposite of each other. So the major compounds included are H2O, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, C6H12O6, which is glucose. Hopefully you remember that as well. And then O2 is just oxygen. So what happens? Well, in this cycle, plants are consuming H2O and CO2. So like I just said in that picture, they take in water, they take in CO2, and they produce glucose and oxygen as a result. Well, animals consume glucose and oxygen, and then they produce water and CO2. But then look, this is where it turns into a cycle. This goes back into what plants consume. So it's this big process. And like down here at the bottom, it says carbon and oxygen cycle through both photosynthesis and cell respiration constantly. That's why it's called the carbon-oxygen cycle. So carbon dioxide is taken up by plants to complete photosynthesis. So plants have two purposes. They produce oxygen, and I should say two purposes in this cycle. The main purpose of plants is to produce food for themselves for doing photosynthesis, but in terms of the cycle, they produce the oxygen that the consumers breathe, and they also are food for primary, which are things like rabbits that eat the grass. The oxygen that organisms breathe as part of cell respiration then returns CO2 back to the atmosphere for these plants. And then the big thing here is the plant food, or plants in general, they contain that carbon, which is passed through the trophic pyramid, which we will also get to this week. So once an organism dies, decomposers cycle all the nutrients back to the ground. You guys are very familiar with what decomposers are. So the organisms that died are pressurized into things like fossil fuels after long amounts of time. Well, when cars or factories consume these fossil fuels, they release what? Well, they're releasing that CO2 or that carbon dioxide, which goes back into this cycle. All right, water cycle. So hopefully you know this, but there is a limited amount of water on Earth. It's not like there's this never-ending supply of fresh water. There's a limited amount, so water has to cycle. And the cycle continues hence why it's called a cycle, so there's no definite start point or end point. That's the key thing to remember. So let's look at this picture. Now this is something that you're going to have to be very familiar with. You will be quizzed on drawing this and labeling it. So you need to know some major terms here. We have 
precipitation, obviously that one should be a given. You have condensation, which is when your clouds are forming, which can ultimately result in precipitation. Thing, things evaporate from water surfaces, so water is evaporating to form condensation. Then you have transpiration. This one is the one that everyone always gets confused. Transpiration comes from trees or plants. That's water released by plants when they open their pores and their leaves. Then you have runoff, and there's underground runoff, and then there's surface runoff, depending on which one, which accumulates. So our terms, we have one is transpiration, and then two can be condensation, so on both sides. Precipitation is three, runoff is four, accumulation is five, Evaporation is six. So there's six terms total. All right, so here's our stages. So evaporation, liquid goes to gas, moves from the ground to the atmosphere. You have condensation, which is when the water vapor turns into liquid droplets. This is when you see your clouds and your fog. Then you have precipitation, which that's pretty obvious. Rain, snow, hail, sleet, that's when the water falls back down to the ground. Transpiration, like I said, is the trees or plants. They release water into the air. You have accumulation. This one should also be pretty simple to remember. When it accumulates, ponds, lakes, groundwater, ditches after a rainstorm. And then you have runoff. This is water moving down the land, down a mountain, through farm fields, all different sorts of ways water runs off. Okay, our third cycle is the nitrogen cycle. So the nitrogen and the phosphorus cycle are a little trickier just because you're not as familiar with them. And this picture may look really overwhelming, but we're just going to talk about some of the basics. So first thing, 79% of air is nitrogen, but we can't use it. So we just breathe it in and breathe it out. Our body doesn't recognize it, so we don't have a use for it at all. But animals rely on a process called nitrogen fixation. And you should write this term down. It's the process of making nitrogen usable for our bodies. So like I said, we can't breathe nitrogen, but we need it in other forms. So it can be done in three ways. So there's lightning, nitrogen fixing bacteria, or human factories. So the nitrogen fixing bacteria is what we're going to focus on. So it's a special species of bacteria that changes nitrogen into usable forms like ammonia or some of your other compounds. And then some plants even contain this bacteria in their roots. So a lot of this happens in the ground. So something that happens in the ground and it's in the plants and the food that we eat. So things like legumes or beans, clover, alfalfa. These are plants that contain this nitrogen fixing bacteria in their roots. And if we go back and let's just talk about the cycle. So nitrogen fixation occurs. That's the number one thing that has to happen because we can't use the nitrogen. Once nitrogen fixation occurs, plants use this nitrogen. And then heterotrophs, like ourselves, we eat the plant or we eat an animal that ate the plant. And then eventually, when we die, decomposers break down our body or the dead animal or whatever it may be and release the nitrogen gas back into the atmosphere. This process is called denitrification, also another term you should write down. So basically what that means is that decomposers are breaking down the dead animal and releasing nitrogen gas is what the term denitrification means. The last cycle is the phosphorus cycle, and this one involves your things like weathering. It doesn't just involve living organisms. So in brief, it takes place mainly in rocks. This is why... It's probably not as common to you at this point. The rain falls on the rocks as, here's that term, runoff again, or it sinks into the soil. The runoff phosphates, or the inorganic, organic is like a living, inorganic means non-living, phosphates, travel into rocks and move to the tops of mountains and then join this runoff cycle again. What this means by tops of mountains is that mountains are eroding or hills are eroding. So as they erode, the rocks at the bottom over many, 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 many years eventually end up at the top of this mountain or this hill to where then it erodes again and goes way back, right back into the process. So these inorganic phosphates, though, in the soil are transformed into organic phosphates by 
plants. So plants are very important in all of these cycles. And then once again, animals eat the plants, and when the animals die, detritivores turn organic phosphates into inorganic phosphates. So detritivores, if we look here, they are going to be in the soil. They're involved in decomposition. Okay. So long story short, with this cycle, you have your rock. It's uplifted eventually to the top of this mountain. As it gets weathered, it goes here, and then it's in the soil. Well, the plants use what's in the soil, and then here's our bunny. He eats these plants, and he consumes it. Well, then eventually, his waste or his body becomes back part of the soil, and then those phosphates in his body will go back into here, where they can end up uplifting again or going back into another plant. 